So today I want to talk about an aunt and her nephew who won $1.2 million in a Chase the Ace uh, lottery system in Nova Scotia, Canada. So, as far as I can understand it, the background to this story is, in Canada, there's a lottery system called Chase the Ace. People buy tickets throughout the week, and at the end of the week, one of those tickets is chosen, or perhaps more than one of those tickets is chosen. I'm not too sure. But those people who get their tickets chosen get to come in front of sort of a a live audience, really, sort of like bingo or a game show, and draw a card from a deck. If the card is the ace, then the person wins the full jackpot. So they win all the money, or um, something like 50% of the money, that's been accumulated through the lottery. And then the, the lottery itself, the company that runs the lottery, keeps 50% of the uh, the total to use for uh, charitable reasons. It's it's one of those things that runs, um, like in the States, in the United States, lotteries fund you know, education initiatives or what have you. So, <clears throat> if you don't draw the ace, then you get a consolation prize, which as far as I can see is roughly $25,000. So, if you buy a ticket and your ticket is selected, you are basically guaranteed to get at least $25,000. And if you draw the ace from the deck, then you get the entire jackpot. And if you don't draw the ace, then your card is removed and the deck gets smaller. So the next week, the possible jackpot is even larger. And if you get a chance to draw the card, then your odds are even better of getting the full jackpot. So this is like a sensation in Canada. Um, drawing huge numbers of people you know, for the area, right? Nova Scotia is not a very densely populated place. But in one of these, uh, drawn on July 12th, a woman and her nephew, the woman's name is Barbara Reddick, and her nephew is Tyrone Mechanis of Glace Bay. So she paid for the ticket, and they won. Um, before, I suppose, she sent the ticket in for drawing, she wrote her name, so Barbara Reddick, and she also wrote her nephew's name, Tyrone McInnes, onto the ticket. She states that she wrote his name onto the ticket for good luck. Uh, the ticket was drawn, and she got the chance to draw a card from the deck, and she happened to draw the ace. And if you draw the ace, of course, you win the jackpot. The jackpot in this question, in this particular drawing, rather, was $1.2 million. <clears throat> so the organizers looked at the ticket, saw that there were two names written on it, and they made each of them a check for $611,000. So the woman, Barbara Reddick, won $611,000, and her nephew, Tyrone McInnes, won $611,000. As soon as this happened... Uh, Barbara Reddick stated that she did not want her nephew to win half the money. That was not her intention. That she wrote his name on the ticket as a means to have quote-unquote good luck. And that she wanted the full $1.2 million. And that she was going to pursue legal action against her nephew. As this case has gone on, she has gotten a lawyer. And the argument will be heard on August 10th. So, she is suing her nephew to get the full money, the $1.2 million. Now, I believe that this woman has a very solid legal case, right? Um, in the case of something like a will, which is the document you leave behind in case you die, right, there can be, you know, real questions as to whether or not what was in the will was truly what the deceased wanted, right? Let's say you make a will 20 years ago, and you were married happily, 
and you love this person, you put them in your will to get 100% of the money. Then you get divorced from this person 10 years later, and you don't update your will. You just neglect to do it, right? Life gets busy, and you don't update your will. But you've had a very nasty breakup with this person. You hate this person now. And then you die. So they pull up your old will, which is now 20 years old, and it says, oh, give it all to my, you know, my ex-spouse, the person I had this nasty breakup with. Generally, there's a very strong legal case to give it to that person who you now hate, or before you were deceased, the person you hated, because it's in your will, and they can't ask you because you're dead. However, they can ask Barbara Reddick what she intended to do, what was her intention with her use of her lottery ticket. Right? No one is disputing the fact that she paid for the ticket. Right? She paid for the ticket. Um, <clears throat> and I think there is a very strong legal case to say, if you paid for the ticket, then you get the money. Right? And I could be totally wrong. Right? I know that there's a lot of people out there who knew more about the law than I do. Know more about contracts than I do. Did she enter into a verbal contract with her nephew? You know, what are the rules of the lottery? this and that, right? Whether she wins or she loses, that's not really what I want to discuss, right? What I want to discuss is that this woman, you know, if you win $611,000 from the lottery, just just be happy with that win, right? You won $611,000. Just, just believe that the jackpot was $611,000, and go about your day. She was not coerced. She was not tricked. She was not fooled in any way into putting his name onto the ticket. Right? Her nephew, Mr. McKinnis, he is not some estranged family member who's not talked to her in 19 years and just pops out of the woodwork as soon as she has a financial windfall. Right? If, if her nephew was some person who was staying at her house and hadn't talked to her for 19 years and saw the lottery ticket and wrote his name on it and he ran off to the mail and put it in, right, you know, behind her back against her will. That would be something different. We could have a discussion about, you know, his moral wrongdoings and her moral wrongdoings, right? But in this instance, I do think that although she will be legally correct, she is still morally incorrect. She is going to sacrifice her closest family, right? This young man, Mr. McKinnis, was active enough in her life, was present enough in her life, that he was actually the one sent on an errand to go you know, actually buy the lottery ticket. She paid for them, but he actually physically bought them. He was present enough in her life that she thought, yeah, I'll write your name on this ticket, you know, quote-unquote, for good luck. Right? She even stated in an interview that the boy is like her son. Right? She is a woman who has no children. And that's fine, right? You can have no children. But you have to look at what's important in this life. Right? Because she's still getting... $611,000. Just let your nephew have $611,000, right? Because what is your legacy going to be? What is your purpose for being on this world, right? Whether you're religious or secular, you have to look at the impact you're going to have on this world, right? $611,000 to a young man, that is a life of comfort and of ease, right? <clears throat> not absolute opulence. He's not going to be living in the lap of luxury, but he'll never have to work in a mine or go onto a fishing boat, you know, and risk his life or risk his limbs. You know, he'll never have an industrial accident, right? Because he'll be able to work jobs that he wants to work. He'll be able to pursue passions. He'll be able to have a family and raise a family, right? This woman will have, you know, grand children, right? His children. So I guess she'll be their great aunt, but 
she will have a legacy. She will have people who care about her. But in the instance of what she's pursuing, she's going to alienate her closest family. She's going to alienate her entire community, right? Nova Scotia is not a big place. And she's going to become the villain of this story. No one's going to want to associate with her. No one's going to be there in her old age, right? No one is going to comfort her throughout her life, right? And perhaps they will reconcile. And I hope they do. I do hope that they reconcile and that they can put this nastiness behind them. But if anyone listening ever gets a windfall, right? If you are in a work pool, you know, you and your workers, you all put in money to go win the Mega Millions, and you guys win $20 million, just split it evenly. Split it evenly based on who put money into that pool. We see stories of these work pools and they'll put in money for months and months and months and lose and lose and lose. And then they'll win. And the person who actually like physically bought the ticket will say, oh, no, no, I won $200 million. And all of his coworkers are like, no, we all chipped in. We all get a share, right? We all should split it evenly. And the person's like, no, 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 I can't do with just $1 million. I need $200 million, right? Just take your windfall. Take your good luck take your lottery winnings and go home with it right if you go to vegas with money you're not prepared to lose you're going to have a bad time and similarly if you win the lottery and you let it tear your family and tear all of the connections you've built up throughout your life apart and you are an old woman or an old man and you have no children right and you have no legacy. And the only people who are there, who are still there for you, who will still care for you in your old age, are your family. And you, you push them away because, no, 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 611,000, that's not enough. I need 1.2. I don't care that this young man can use this to fund his entire life and have an easy life. And my legacy can be that I have set my family up for future success. No, I need $1.2 million and I will destroy every interpersonal relationship I have to get it, right? That sort of behavior, I think, is morally wrong <clears throat> and it's not justifiable. This woman should have just been happy that she and her closest relatives right can can have a really happy moment and have a nice easy life but instead she wants to involve lawyers and she wants to squander this i mean 1.2 million dollars isn't that much money i mean a lawyer charges what a hundred dollars two hundred dollars an hour you know just just to to just to do your work so now you're paying thousands upon thousands of that 1.2 in lawyers fees you get it you still have to pay taxes on it, right? So at the end of the day, you're looking at maybe like $800,000 of your total 1.2, and now you've alienated your family, you've alienated your community, and you're going to, you know, possibly die alone. And I don't hope this woman dies alone. I don't hope that. I do hope that she can reconcile with her family and that they can all make amends. But... The moral standard that we should be looking for should not be money at all costs, right? Of course, you should improve yourself. You should try to get a better job. You should work hard. You should take opportunities. Network. If you know somebody that can give you a job, of course, take that job. Get your money. Earn your living. But if you have to alienate every single person in your life for half a million dollars, maybe it's not worth it. So that's all I have to say on this case, and I hope you all have a nice day.